What's up guys, it's giveaway time. This is one of the random videos we're giving away a prize, so get ready because you don't know what's coming. Today we're giving away five copies of Madden 20 to five different winners. Now in order to qualify to win one of these prizes, you have to, and I repeat, have to follow these four steps. Step one, you have to be subscribed to TPS. Step two, this video has to reach 12,500 likes. Again, that's 12,500 likes. Step three, you need to comment down below which NFL star you think will have the biggest downfall and why. Step four, you have to share this video, whether it be to Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, your best friend or family member. If you don't share this video, you ain't getting Madden. Once you do all of these things, you will be qualified to receive a copy of Madden. We're going to pick a comment down below, check to see you meet our qualifications and then boom, free Madden for you. Yeah. You. The winner will be announced on our social media pages, so make sure to go follow them as well. Good luck, TPSers. What's up, guys? Every year we see a handful of NFL stars, MVP candidates, and future Hall of Famers decline in production. It's obviously hard for us fans to watch. You never want to see somebody become a shell of their former selves. But it's what athletes sign up for. You can't be in your prime forever. Based on numerous factors, some of the NFL's most electrifying and dominant players figured to take a big step back in 2019. These guys were among the NFL's elite players last season. But let's just say they're not going to win you your fantasy football league this time around. I'm Jason Biondo, and today we present 10 NFL superstars who will experience a huge decline in 2019. Don't forget to leave your video ideas down below. We will be looking and if you choose your idea, we'll give you a shout out in the video. Make sure to subscribe to TPS and put on your notifications because we post videos every single day. Every day is a new video. Subscribe. Number 10, Ben Roethlisberger. The Pittsburgh Steelers quarterback led the NFL with 5,129 passing yards in 2018. It was also a career best for Big Ben. So it seems a bit ludicrous to say he'll decline in 2019. Roethlisberger, after all, hasn't shown any signs of slowing down as he enters his age 37 season. If any Anything the two-time Super Bowl champion has only gotten way better with age. But I mean, it's pretty obvious. Roethlisberger's working relationship with Antonio Brown ended on a very ugly and sour note, and the latter grew frustrated with the treatment he got from his quarterback. Brown and Big Ben quarreled in a practice, which led to AB sitting out week 17. He requested a trade and was sent to the Oakland Raiders. Almost the Buffalo Bills though. <laughs> Remember that? There is simply no replacing the production of Brown. The perennial pro bowler is one of the most dynamic offensive playmakers we've ever seen. This is a guy with six straight seasons of 100% plus catches and over 1,000 receiving yards. There is no way the Steelers can replace him, unless they somehow trade it for Julio Jones or DeAndre Hopkins, and that's not gonna happen. Roethlisberger's only legitimate star playmaker on offense is Juju Smith-Schuster, who actually led Pittsburgh in receiving. But Juju alone isn't going to be enough for Roethlisberger. The Steelers didn't add any notable pass catchers to help. As good as James Conner was, he isn't as electric as Le'Veon Bell was in the passing game. So yeah, Roethlisberger and the Steelers might continue their winning ways in 2019, but expect his stats to go way down. Roethlisberger's probably going to drop off by almost 1,000 passing yards, and it's highly unlikely he'll reach a career-high 34 passing touchdowns that he recorded in 2018. So statistically speaking, his numbers will go way down. The Steelers just have to hope his winning ways don't go down with his stats. Number nine, Aqib Tlaib. The five-time Pro Bowl cornerback turned out to be an excellent fit for the Los Angeles Rams in 2018. Tlaib was reunited with defensive coordinator Wade Phillips. Three seasons after the two helped the Denver Broncos win Super Bowl 50. The physically dominant Tlaib turned in a fine age 32 season for the Rams despite missing eight games. He had five passes defended and one interception. And LA secondary just wasn't as good without him. With Tlaib healthy in the postseason, the Rams shut down the Dallas Cowboys in the divisional round, upset the New Orleans Saints in the NFC title game, and held Tom Brady's New England Patriots to just 13 points. Turns out Tlaib still had it. Oh, and he earned a nice 76.6 grade from Pro Football Focus on the 2018 season. But Tlaib enters his age 33 season in 2019, and that's a popular age for cornerbacks to really slow down. The ankle injury he suffered last year is also worrisome. One more injury like that, and Tlaib might not be the same again. We're strictly factoring in age here. Tlaib remains a solid number one or two corner, but he's no longer the top five guy that we saw in Denver for those three years. Expect father time to slowly catch up to to leave in 2019, and his Pro Bowl play will evaporate before long. Number 8, Ndamukong Sue. After an up-and-down three-year tenure with the Miami Dolphins, Sue was released and joined the Los Angeles Rams in the 2018 offseason. The hope was that pairing Sue with the game's best defensive player, Aaron Donald, would lead to an unstoppable pass rush. Well, Donald won his second straight Defensive Player of the Year award. However, Sue wasn't able to regain his Pro Bowl form, and he didn't do enough in the Rams' Super Bowl 53 game against the Patriots. According to PFF, Sue tuned in a grade of 82.6 in 2018, slight drop off from the 85.6 grade he had in 2017. PFF also ranked 2018 as his worst overall season as a pass rusher. And as he enters his age 32 season, 
it's hard to see how Sue can turn back the clock now. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers gave Sue a one-year deal after releasing fellow perennial pro bowler Gerald McCoy. Interesting decision there. Sue might be a great fit for new head coach Bruce Arians, but that doesn't mean he's going to play like a defensive player of the year candidate again. We could see him being serviceable, but Sue's days as a dominant run stopper and interior pass rusher are long gone. Based on his play over the last five years, it's safe to say that regression will come here in Tampa. Number 7, Russell Wilson. The Seattle Seahawks gave their franchise quarterback a giant four-year extension worth $140 million after leaving the team to the playoffs for the sixth time in seven years. We do expect Wilson to continue his strong level of play, but will he play at an MVP-like level again in 2019? We don't see it. Not with Doug Baldwin, his most trusted receiver ever, having to retire due to injuries. Not sure if special teams weapon and utility man Tyler Lockett will produce as a number one receiver again like he did in 2018. The 35 TD pass is worthy most of Wilson's career, but you can expect those numbers to dip with Baldwin gone. And as good as Wilson was in 2018, those 3,448 passing yards were the third fewest he has recorded in a season. It's not great. We expect the Seahawks to drop off as a whole in 2019, and it'll start with the offense. This is nothing against Wilson, but asking Lockett to repeat a successful 2018 campaign might be too much. And there's no replacing a game-changing wideout like Baldwin. We wish the Seahawks, especially Wilson, all the best in trying to prove us wrong. Number 6, Adrian Peterson. Just when we thought the game's best running back from this era was done. AP went out and rushed for 1,042 yards and 7 touchdowns for the Washington Redskins. So as it turns out, the future Hall of Famer and 2012 NFL MVP winner wasn't washed up. Good on AP for silencing the doubters and finding the fountain of youth, but it's hard to see how he'll do it again in 2019. The Redskins don't have any true number one pass catchers here. Unless Josh Doxson is ready for a breakout year, that means opposing defenses will be able to focus solely on stacking the box and thus containing Peterson and Washington's rushing game. That coupled with entering his age 34 season is enough for us to believe that he'll regress quite a bit. Also, don't expect Washington to give Peterson such a giant workload in 2019. Chris Thompson and rookie Bryce Love will surely get their fair share of carries. And don't forget about the 2018 draft pick Darius Geis, there you go. running back, LSU. That all adds up to a decline in production for Peterson. And we wouldn't be surprised if 2019 marked the final season of his legendary career. Number 5, Chris Jones. The standout defensive tackle was one of the lone bright spots on the Kansas City Chiefs' awful defense in 2018. Jones enjoyed a breakout year with 15.5 sacks, 5 passes defended, and 2 forced fumbles, helping the Chiefs reach the AFC Championship game. But Kansas City's defense underwent major changes in the offseason, and it included the departure of Jones' two best sidekicks, Pro Bowl linebacker Justin Houston, who was released, and fellow stud pass rusher D. Ford, who was traded to the San Francisco 49ers. Now the Chiefs did trade for Seattle Seahawks pass rusher Frank Clark, but even if he produces well in KC, the team is still down to two great pass rushers instead of three. Make no mistake, Jones is the Chiefs' go-to guy on defense. He's their top pass rusher, not Clark. Teams no longer have to worry about Houston, and they don't have to account for Ford coming off the edge. That makes a huge difference, and opposing teams will focus their offense on keeping Jones in check, something the Patriots did extremely well in the AFC title game. Jones will continue to be a big time playmaker for the Chiefs defense. The departure of Ford and Houston will lead to a down year for Jones. Number 4, AJ Green. A toe injury forced the Cincinnati Bengals star to miss 7 games in 2018. As such, AJ Green failed to reach 1,000 receiving yards for the first time in his career. It's not just the injury that makes us think his best days are behind him. It's age as well, with Green entering his age 31 season. Oh, and quarterback Andy Dalton continues to regress with each passing year. That doesn't bode well for Green. And finally, Tyler Boyd emerged as the team's top receiver in 2018. John Ross, who caught seven touchdowns in 13 games last season, might finally break out this year. If he does, then Green will surely see his targets go down. Injuries, age, declining quarterback production, and young receivers? Yeah. Expect Green to really begin to drop off in production here in 2019. Number 3, Richard Sherman. The future Hall of Famer was one of the many notable veterans released by the Seattle Seahawks in 2018. Sherman went about his I've Still Got It tour and joined the San Francisco 49ers on a three-year pact worth $39 million. However, Sherman showed plenty of signs that he was declining during his age 30 season. That was expected, given the change of teams, his age, the fact that he was coming off a ruptured Achilles that ended his 2018 season. Sherman earned a grade of 68.9 from PFF in 2018, placing him 50th among quarterbacks. That certainly doesn't put Sherman in the elite category, and there's no reason to believe he'll regain that top-notch form again. 31 is old for a cornerback. It doesn't help that Sherman is playing in a San Fran defense that isn't built around his skills. He was simply better off in Seattle, where they relied on the play of their secondary. And again, it's never going to be easy for him to recover from that ruptured Achilles injury. Sherman is past his prime now. The only question is if he'll remain serviceable in 2019, or if he'll end up becoming a liability on the San Fran defense. Number 2, Antonio Brown. If he was still 
still on the Pittsburgh Steelers, Antonio Brown wouldn't be on this list. But trust us, going from the future Hall of Famer in Ben Roethlisberger to an inconsistent Derek Carr means one thing, a big time decline in production. Nothing against Carr here, but he's never been a top five quarterback in the NFL. Injuries, a bad offensive line, and a lack of playmakers outside of Amari Cooper led to forgettable seasons for Carr in 2016 and 17. Brown forced his way out of Pittsburgh and was traded to the Oakland Raiders for third and fifth round picks. Head coach John Gruden did more than add Brown to the offense. He also signed wideout Tyrell Williams, and offensive tackle Trent Brown. Alabama running back Josh Jacobs was picked up in the first round of the draft as well. All these new additions alone mean Brown will have a difficult time producing top flight receiver numbers. Do we mention he's no longer on a Steelers team that has an elite quarterback? And you know, an offensive system that was largely built around his talents. Good luck on a rebuilding Oakland team with an inconsistent quarterback and a bad offensive line. When's the last time an all pro wide receiver in his 30s continued to produce high numbers when he went from a great quarterback to a mediocre one? Yeah. That's what we thought. We don't think AB will be a total bust, but we're not sure if he'll record another 100 catch, 1,000 yard, and double digit TD seasons here in Oakland. We wouldn't be surprised if he didn't finish in the top 10 for catches or receiving yards either. Number one, Todd Gurley. Through his first four NFL seasons, Todd Gurley earned three Pro Bowl selections, won the 2015 Offensive Rookie of the Year award, and the 2017 Offensive Player of the Year award. And he led the NFL in rushing touchdowns twice. And he led the Rams to a Super Bowl 53 appearance. Oh, and he recorded three 1,000 yard seasons. But despite accomplishing all of that by the age of 24, we already see Gurley declining. Why? It's not just because of the knee injury that hampered him during the playoffs. NFL Network reported during the offseason that Gurley won't be the bell cow running back anymore. That is, they simply won't make him the every down guy. That's the smart play, since the Rams want to keep him healthy and get as many prime years from him as possible. Oh, and the Rams drafted Memphis running back Daryl Henderson in the third round. So there you have it. The Rams don't want Gurley playing to the point where he'll challenge for individual hardware, as well as NFL records, MVP awards, rushing titles, the usual. They want to reduce his workload and have Gurley healthy for the playoff runs. Again, they're making the right call. That also means Gurley won't be among your top rushing leaders anymore. And he won't be one of the biggest must-have running backs in your fantasy drafts. Injuries and a reduced workload mean that Gurley won't perform at an MVP level anymore. Fair or not, that's the right choice the Rams have made. Which other NFL superstars will experience massive declines in 2019? Join me in the comment section below. Make sure to follow myself and TPS on social media. We post great content all the time. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. I post videos every single week and they're really entertaining. So if you want more of me, you should go there. Make sure to subscribe to TPS because we post videos every single day. Every day is a new video. Subscribe. If you like this video, give it a like. It takes one click right down there. Smash that like button. Of course, thank you so much for watching. I'm Jason Biondo. I'll see you next time. On my knees.